rise in the Pokemon stars, more specifically his Jigglypuff. I mean, I think that's just like, <clears throat> excuse me, a Canadian thing. Like, they have a really strong Lucario here. Then they have, I think, two Greninjas that are really, really exceptional. And then, of course, Captain L with the Pikachu and Jig. So this might just be a Pokemon country. Who knows? I mean, like Pokemon trainers, man. Yeah, man. That's uh, what it's all about. And speaking of Pikachu, we definitely know that a cat is no stranger to that character. A uh, long time ago, he had played Pikachu for some time, um, co-maining with Ness. Yeah, he did. Um, and I, that was like some of the earlier days in Smash 4. Um, but since then, you know, he's kind of put the Pikachu away. He mm -hmm. put the Pikachu back in the Pokeball, as hard of a task as that is in the Pokemon series. And he switched over to Fox and Ness. All right. So I'm really excited to see what we're going to get here for this first game. I think I heard Jigglypuff. Okay, let's get hype. We let's got Jigglypuff. Go. Let's go. And I believe uh, Captain L is pretty confident in this. I, he had taken it over Larry Lur as Jigs. I'm uh, pretty sure. Um, using the rest, though, to uh, stay by the left side of the stage mm -hmm. and completely ducking under Fox's lasers. And Captain L noticed very passive player. Could be very aggressive when he wants to turn on the switch, but here he does not need to. He needs to watch out, though, as we know from the past, Jigs is a very light character. Yes, you know, Jigglypuff, very light character, certainly has her setups, and she, you know, has the, the potential to combo Fox very well, but one thing we gotta touch on with Nakat and Fox is that they have the ability to turn one hit into two hits, turn two into four, and it begins to stack up from there. And history shows Jigglypuff can't take too much damage being the lightest character in the game, you know. Exactly. Even though those lasers do uh, 1%, it doesn't matter because each of that percent racks up, especially against a character like Jigs. Oh, for sure. All right, but, you know, Captain L being very evasive here, not allowing himself to get chained up anymore, kind of playing a little bit more passively, you know, staying back into the cut, hoping the cat kind of comes to him this time. Oh, oh, beautiful. There's the up tilt. Couldn't quite find an entry point there for the up air that time. And I think that's just due to like Jigglypuff's weird weight and the fact that she floats. Sometimes a lot of those combos you're so comfortable going for don't really work as well on a character like her. And Captain L can't really approach from the air here, especially against a character like Fox, who loves to keep his opponents up with up air. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pour some close <laughs> low profile in the lasers. That's so hilarious. I'm sorry, he was doing that all day yesterday too, and I just think it's the funniest thing ever. Like, uh, you think you're gonna be able to hit me with a neutral special, then I just duck right yeah, under no, it. Yeah, no, turns into paper. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> the cat getting the grab, sending Captain L off stage, and it just seems as if Captain L is struggling a little bit. Oh, but he managed to actually. <gasps> get, I thought he was gonna go for the restaurant. <laughs> I thought he was. I was certainly afraid for him. He was going. He was trying to go for that the whole time, and the cat was not falling for it. He, it seemed as if the cat thought he was a little bit uh, too far to get caught in that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that could have definitely have been a game changer right there. Yep. Uh, but sparing his life, the yep. cat, 54%. Most definitely, you know. And I, I really ought to talk about Captain No here for a moment. You know, he understands his points and his positions in this match. He knows that he can't go blow for blow with Fox. He knows that he can't do a lot of trading. So all he's doing is just waiting and kind of dancing around the cat so he finds that one opening. And then like we just seen her a moment ago, he's going to try to go for it and he's going to try to take it. So how well can the cat really deal with this sort of play style? You know, the guy that's kind of in control of the pace of this match. I like how he hasn't been trying to overcommit too much. Um, only trying to hit Captain L whenever Captain Errol L tries lingering uh, next to him or trying to go for an aggressive option. That's when the cat is ready. Mm -hmm. Getting the grab off, uh, off the ledge there, sending Captain L off stage. Uh-oh. Okay, gets the dash attack. Face out the air dodge that time, too. You know, Captain L's like maneuverability in the air and how evasive he's been has been really well. It's been really good um, throughout the beginning of this match. But, you know, like I said, Nakat, he might not be getting all the conversions he's looking for, but the ones he is landing, he turns one into a couple. And this is the patient play that you're going to be seeing from Captain L. Knows. He doesn't really, uh, Jigglypuff doesn't really have the best approach option in the game. So he has to kind of deal with what he has. Okay. 80% on the board. Jigglypuff certainly knocking on Death's door here. Let's see if he's going to be able to answer. Okay, tries to cross him up, goes right back to the ledge. I like that. The cat, he's seen the vibes. He's like, I'm not getting anywhere close to that ledge. I knew you're going to try to put me to sleep and rest me. But at this time, at this point in time of the match, is it really the safest option for Captain L to go for? Because at 82%, it might be a little, it might be a little hard for him to mash out of rest. And then, of course, you know, the cat's going to come back down and probably up smash him. Yeah, exactly. He's trying to go for the up tilt into up air right there, and it's a very scary position for Captain L. Finding his way below the cat, though, and pounds. Why did it send him so far? <laughs> Y'all were asking for pound 2018. Here it is. <laughs> it's here at Gamble. Featuring Jigglypuff 
And good patience, though, coming from Captain L, regardless of the percent <laughs> deficit and the stock deficit that he was at, managed to be below the cat. And that was what he was trying to go for the whole time. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is, is that this is the pressuring that uh, Jigglypuff is just forced to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and the cat's just doing a good job at not trying to overcommit as well. Yeah, I didn't really understand how how just neutralizing sometimes the, the pressure that Fox brings can be until I watched Larry Larry against Gluttony yesterday. I'm like, wow, you know, Gluttony has such cool setups. You know, he has all his tricks. But at the end of the day, Fox in that pressure, it just never stops. And as we've seen right there, closes that game out with that devastatingly strong back air as we move right into the next match. And by default, Jigglypuff is going to be lingering in the air a lot, which is uh, something that uh, forces you to give up your shield since you can't shield when you're up there. Uh, and the cat was able to capitalize off of that, especially with Fox. He's going to be looking for those jumps to potentially go for an up smash. Mm -hmm. Oh, where did, where did the cat go? Did he just dip? No, I think he wanted to get something real quick. Oh, okay. Ooh, repping, oh, Red, Red, Red Bull. Bull. Shout out to Red Bull, by the way. Uh, definitely putting some pizzazz to this tournament. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Red Bull is here in the building. Um, you know, as I just look to my right and kind of glance over the audience, you know, I'm seeing like two big Red Bull trucks, you know, streaming <laughs> a bunch of games. I think I see some Fortnite as well. And then, of course, we can't talk about or we can't forget to talk about the heavy hitter here. Nintendo, they are partnered with that wonderful company that has given us Smash 4. You know, without them, we wouldn't even have a game to talk about. I'd, I'd be at home yeah. working at the mall still <laughs> had, it, had it not been for Nintendo. Giving us the ability to have Gobble be the Yoshi Island theme. Right. Shout out to Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And here we are, game two. Captain L switching to Pikachu did not want to be playing that so pace of a game with Jigglypuff. Nah, I think, you know, because he did it versus, oh, what the heck? Whoa, okay, gets a couple up tilts in a row, gets the drag down forward. I forgot Fox's combo food. It's Ooh, Fox, it's Fox it hunting straight season. Down with fair too. Captain L making it back onto the stage show, applying so much pressure. He's only taken 6% run. Only taken 6%. Such a strong start in comparison to what we've seen in that last game, but I don't fault him too much for picking Jigglypuff. He was like, it worked earlier yesterday versus a few of the Foxes. Let me see how well it works against the cat but like i've said before you know it might be the same character but different player every one of them plays different and the cat was having none of that jigglypuff nonsense but this pikachu though the cat kind of struggling to find some answers for yeah completely different play style than what we were used to the last game extremely aggressive approach here from captain l mm -hmm. okay fox losers back on the stage before captain l could even think about pressing the button the cat is back in his face there with the dash attack gets another one in a row Captain L is going to want to look out for those air dodges by the ledge there. Very scary situation. Fox could, as everyone knows, do the fair footstool ladder combo. Well, Pikachu's recovery is really nice. And unfortunately, he tried to he tried to hold shield for that. I don't know how much you want to hold shield for that, though. Nah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to hold shield too long in this game, especially not going up against a character like Fox. You know what he's going to do right when that shield is broke. He's going to go right up to you. He's going to charge that up smash. He's going to send you sky high. But regardless of that, you know, Captain L is still holding on to this lead, but for how much longer? The cat stopping the bleeding early on, drawing this match much closer to what we've seen before. Tries to drag him down with the forward air into the up smash. Eh, not going to be enough. Not going to have it. Uh, Fox being a very light character, great DI coming from the cat. Although the Thunder did send him on the right side of the stage there. Yep. Still working with a little bit of time here, the four minute mark, and both of these two characters kind of just slugging it out here. Okay, gets the forward throw. Find himself off stage. I like that maneuverability, just kind of outmaneuvering the cat. Contesting the cat's up air with the down air right before the hitbox was able to come out. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that the. Oh, that's not the trade you ever want to make. Man, that back air. I mean, it, it was the move that sealed his fate there in the last game when he was playing Jigglypuff, you know, and here it is, you know, the move that sealed his fate on that first stop. Answers back really quickly, though. Gets that tried and true Pikachu combo, and he's back into an even game. Just moving, coming from Captain L. You can tell the confidence that this man is radiating. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you can definitely feel it in the room. The crowd is certainly coming alive, and I think they feel it as well. Okay. Really picking his points a little bit more carefully here. Not really wanting to come in too aggressive. As we know, both of these two characters can turn a little bit into a lot. Um, so oh as they know, one conversion, and you're going to eat a lot of damage. Here we go. And the movement that we're seeing for both these players, Captain L spacing himself perfectly to go for those follow-ups. Mm -hmm. OK. There's a dare. There's the forwarder right up off the ledge, trying to bring this match back towards center stage. Neither one of these characters want to be towards the ledge and, and have their back to the wall there. They want to stay towards center stage, kind of taking the page out of Little Max book or something. Great patience, recognizing the power shield, not trying to go for an aggressive follow-up that could possibly lead him into the vortex of the up tilt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Retreating. I like that. Both characters using their neutral specials. 
you know, I forgot that Fox kind of has that reflector as well, too, man. You know, we never really get to see a lot of that unless it's like Fox trying to stall out of recovery. So it's really nice to see it used here in these high stakes situations. Yeah, perfect matchup to use it, too. Mm -hmm. Captain L finding himself stuck on the ledge, still managing to make it back once again, being aggressive with the down air. Okay. Here we go. Fox loses back to the ledge. Gets back towards center stage that time. But in the past, we've seen Fox losing and run right in for the dash attack because typically the opponent is like, okay, I'm going to try to catch the ending lag of Fox losing, but not that time. That was a little scary. Nakat does have rage. I thought he was going to go for the up smash there from the tech chase. Okay. It's the forwarder away. Kind of goes back to what you're talking about. This good movement here that we're seeing from both of these two players. Neither one wanting to come in aggressively and get punished. But as long as you stay far away, the cat has the luxury of using his lasers. Pikachu not being able to low profile under them as well as we've seen with this Jigglypuff. Uh-oh. I'm a little scared right now. I feel like Captain L is looking for the perfect opportunity how, how, to get how, the how, how? and managing to dodge the thunder <gasps> and dodging the up air rod. This is such a scary situation. It seems as if Captain L wanted to be very patient and possibly go for an up smash as he was trying to catch the cat's Whoa. landing. Whoa, he is in this man's head. Now, I thought after that re-grab situation, we thought we were going to see him try to scout out a down smash and sweep this man into the abyss. Not that time. Captain L opening up here for another grab. Very scary situation for both of these players. Last stock, last hit situation here. Yeah, this is coming down to the final moments. We're just nearing the 50-second mark here. Both these two characters playing so carefully here. Captain L, the cat, oh, gets the up throw and throws him right into the sun back there. See you later. Very interesting option right there coming from Captain L. He just wanted to close it out. Oh, so yeah. he, he was oh, like, he yeah. was done at this point. You know, and I'm and not you're even, 150. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm not even mad that that match went down to the wire like that. That was a good showing there of mental fortitude, you know, going down to the final moments. That's what makes a top player a top player. I want to say that was a perfect match to present to you what neutral is. Oh, yeah. The way that you saw both the cat and Captain L moving, the way that they were both microspacing to prevent from one or the other trying to overcommit slightly or just being too close to the other to prevent themselves from getting followed up, that was the perfect match to display that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, both of those two guys just really showing how well and how long that they've been playing. You know, that was certainly experience if I've ever seen it myself. And again, you got to stay charged up. There's that Red Bull. Let's see if he can charge up his play style to move right into the next game. One game apiece here for both of these two players, but unfortunately only one will make it into the next round. And we have the switch here to Ness. Okay, no more Fox. No more Fox. I like that. You know, I think I've seen a little bit of Nakat. Um, I got to commentate some of his matches yesterday, and one thing that he was doing really well at um, was finding openings for up air. And I think that's kind of the game plan that he has in mind. He understands that going against Captain L is not going to be a quick match by any means. He's going to have to go the distance. And what better way to close out final stocks than using it with like a back row or like a falling up air from Ness? Especially against a uh, character like Pikachu, who is not the heaviest character whatsoever. No, not at all. Definitely on the light side. Uh, and Captain L still managing to rack up so much percent. But as we saw from the last game, it did not matter because Nakat was still able to potentially bring it back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Things not starting off too well here for Nakat. Only 59%. You know, it's not so much the damage that I'm speaking on. It's just how well Captain L has been moving and putting on the percent. Oh, okay, a little bit too preemptive there with the up smash. Finds himself off stage again, and Captain L seems to have a plan in mind on keeping him out there. Oh. Trying to land with the up air. So you're talking about Rod. Yeah. Captain L is going to have to look out for that. Okay. Let's him back on stage for free here. Center stage at that. That's where the cat is trying to keep it. Oh, yeah. He said, where are you going? Really smart option. Noticing from Captain L that the cat was going to go for more of a defensive option, especially at this percent. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Gets the, oh. okay. Gets the forwarder that time. Boom. Down tilt. Gets the grab follow-up, but still not quite enough to get the stock taken. Now, I would really hope Captain L can turn this into something in fast because history shows, you know, Ness plus Ray, some scary business Ooh. can go down here for the, even the strongest of opponents. Yeah, that was a little scary there. He had air dodge right next to Captain L, but Captain L not getting a follow-up from that. Cat still able to land safely onto the ground, but at 155% max rage. Yeah, how much longer can he hold on to this, unfortunately? I'm really, uh, really worried. Okay. It goes right in for the dash attack. Only 16% on board. He's really having a hard time putting on damage here. Okay, but I think Captain L starting to respect the Cat's gameplay a little bit more. Oh, there's that down tilt. Tries to keep him caught into the corner here. Real fast game of Cat and Mouse. He's just chasing him down. Great awareness from the power shield into Nair. 
trying to keep Nakat off stage, possibly trying to make him go for a re grab there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay. Goes for the up throw, and again the same move that closed out the last match is closing out the first stock here. This movement that we're seeing from Captain L. Notice how he does not need to force an approach, considering the fact that he does have the lead. So the moment that Nakat gets slightly too close, he gets caught in these back air vortexes. Notice how now Nakat is at 22%, his last stock. Yeah, and things are certainly not looking good for my man Nakat right now. I hope he taps into some of that uh, that drink from Wakanda, man. He can <laughs> possibly power up a little bit here because Captain L is just certainly all over the place. And, you know, you talked about that, that back here. I feel like that's kind of a slept-on move for Pikachu. People forget that that move can really take you from one end of the stage to another, and it can really screw your whole DI up sometimes. Captain L wants the throne for himself. The cat, though, getting the PK th <laughs> fire. <laughs> <But Pika -monger. laughs> oh, oh, but I was going to say, that looked like it was going to stop Captain L in his tracks, and he was going to fall right next to the cat. But thankfully, he was able to get away on time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now he has certainly been lapped here at this point. Things are looking very bleak right now for the cat. Captain L all over the place, and the cat really struggling here to pinpoint where Captain L is going to be so he could be there before him. Okay, Pikachu certainly with the quick buttons right now. Look at this movement. Oh, my God. I know somewhere Esam is very happy. <laughs> yeah, somewhere he's in the crowd smiling. Okay. Gets the PK Thunder. Keeps Captain L off of his feet. I like that understanding there are no platforms here. So both of these two characters, as well equipped as they are with their recovery options, are going to struggle that much more to get back onto center stage. And the cat's going to want to look out for uh, those rising up airs. Captain L is always there beside him to make sure he catches his landing, and the Thunder going to take it over Nakat for this game. Captain L two stalking Nakat. Yeah, two stalking him. Uh, two, two stalking him. Excuse me. Um, very convincingly, you know, at that. You know, there was a point in time where the match kind of looked like it was going to be even-ish, um, but it just, you know, with the way Captain L has been setting the pace for the set, you know, he just kind of picked away at Nakat and really made it difficult for him to get anything going. Now we're seeing, did I just hear Lucas? Lucas? Yep. Lu yep. Lucas? Yep. What yep. The? Yep. I was going to say, he, his his fox was actually pretty nice yeah, it was. Uh, to see. So I was, I was actually going to expect him to go back to fox. But, Rod, Lucas? I think what was going on is that, you know, with the character like Fox in those last second situations, you know, like what we've seen in that first game, he, or second game, excuse me, he just struggled to find that finishing blow because everything requires a setup for Fox. And if Captain L's DI is immaculate, if he's able to get out of that, what can Fox really do for the most part? Right. At least with the character like Lucas, you know, we see Captain L go for a lot of these short hops and, you know, maybe Lucas has the ability to zare him out of that and really make Captain L think twice before he decides to come in. Very interesting uh, choice here. Using the PK Thunder, landing in the middle of the stage. Unfortunately, he's going to be getting punished for that. Mm -hmm. Not taking too much percent, though, out of that conversion. No, absolutely not. You know, it's definitely going to be a, uh, a slow-paced match here when it comes to uh, putting on the damage here for both of these two characters. They both kind of just chip away and chisel until you're at, like, 300,000%, and then they're all looking for, like, that one setup or that one move that's going to get the job done. I feel like it's very uh, familiar seeing from the last few games between these uh, players how, uh, oh, that was so scary. That forward smash just as Nakat was jumping off the ledge there. Mm -hmm. Okay, gets to Zare, keeping him at bay. I like the switch here. Seems to be a little bit more comfortable in allowing Captain O to kind of dance around him. Oh, gets him with the Nair. Don't get too close. Try to drag him down with it into the forward smash. Not going to be working this time, though. No, not at all. Much more close to game here than what we've seen in a few rounds prior. Uh-oh. Okay. Both guys playing footsies. Don't get too close, though. Here's the entire shoe. <laughs> Aside from the shoe, he's making sure he walls him out with his air. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I like that little dash attack animation. The Going. patience coming from the cat, too. I think he's trying to make sure that Captain L does not feel comfortable enough to close in this gap. Yeah. They definitely want to take all sense of comfortability away. Kind of make him go into a, oh, 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 oh. And that's what he's you know looking what, for. That 
is why he picked Lucas. That's why he picked That him. is why he picked Lucas. Here on Final Destination, getting the grab confirmed into up air. That is something you want to look out for, especially if you are Pikachu. And what he kind of picked up on that last match was that Captain L stays like that comfortable distance away to where like he couldn't be hit by PK Fire, but he also couldn't do anything too crazy from far away. And so he felt like, man, if I switch to a character with the tether or a character that can kind of zare you out, it might make the task a little bit easier at hand for myself. Okay, gets the jab, 132%. He's slowly but surely working his way here into a game of five situation. A, a little bit too early with the forest mask that time. Although uh, the cat did power shield it, he did not opt to go for an aggressive option there. Mm -mm. He'd rather stay his distance. He is at 141%. Now Captain L is playing the Cats game. Oh, yeah. oh but there's tackle attack. It doesn't even matter. 59% here. Got ourselves an even game for the most part. I'm really liking this Lucas uh, pick. You know, I, was, I was a little worried, but I feel like though, as to be in a, a talent of a player that the Cat is, to pick Lucas so late in the game, maybe he knows something that we don't. Definitely uh, recognize a situation that he was able to capitalize off of with Lucas, especially since this game is the one game that we see in his favor. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a dash attack, Captain L. He's kind of gotten the script flipped on him. You know, it is himself in the passenger seat as Nakat kind of drives towards victory here. But Captain L, as history shows, he has a very good record of coming back from some pretty big deficits here. Let's see how well he can do this. Unfortunately, okay. trying to contest Captain L with the down air, and he was going to be taking a good amount of percent as he tried to find his footing back towards the stage. Okay. Here we go. Okay, catches him out of the short hop animation that time. Keeps him into, oh, into the corner. We almost have ourselves an even game. Don't even think about touching that ledge. Oh, and then catches the roll backwards with the grab. Back throws him back into the ledge. Captain L doing a no really way. good... Oh, and he kills Rod! Oh. <laughs> Lucas, these little kids, though. These little kids having such a great back throw. Very smart awareness coming from the cat. And you know what, Ron? I suspected that he was trying to go for the grab to follow up with a similar setup that we saw from the first stock mm -hmm. down throw, up air. But on the ledge, on the ledge, as he saw that Captain L was being a lot more aggressive because Captain L was under the impression that Nikat was being very defensive yes. in that approach, yes. Nikat was able to capitalize off of that yes. and get the back throw. He said it was all a facade. I made you think that you were in control and that you were bringing this one back. I was just waiting for that one situation, <laughs> you fool. It you was got too all close. a dream. Yeah. <laughs> Most certainly here, but neither one of these two players reading Word Up magazines are certainly trying to read each other the best way possible to try to move right in to the next round here. But only one can go. Okay, low profiling. I like that. Oh, are we doing this right now? Oh, we're doing this. Oh, this oh is, it's going this down. This has been the pace. This has been the pace between these two players this entire set. It's going down. And you know what? Sometimes some people are like, man, the pace of the game isn't to my liking. It's way too slow. But the way that both of these players have been moving, the way that both of these players have been tiptoeing around each other has been nothing but entertaining, Rod. <laughs> Wimpy Woods is like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Y'all need to get back into fighting, man. I've been here for a long time. I want to see some fights. I don't want to see that. Okay, but Nakat, you know, notorious for slowing the match down. I've seen some crazy matches from him, like going back and watching old Brawl Boss. Like, if you guys ever get the chance, look up Crossfire 3, Mewtwo King versus Nakat, man. And it, it's just like them standing there, Meta Knight Ice Climbers. You know, they, they don't mind slowing it down to that pace if they have to do it. Okay. I like that. Uses up special, snaps the ledge very quickly there. There's the up tilt, gets two, three in a row. Okay, has to frame that to kind of bust up that, uh, that chain of up tilts there. Trying to <laughs> the yelling from the crowd, trying to not get too close to the cat, and we are once again seeing the cat playing such a patient game. Do you think from the last game when he was playing Lucas, he noticed that the change of match was Whoa. really in his favor, and that's that, 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 oh. the jackpot oh. coming from Captain L okay. from the DI run, saving the cat from falling down. 10 more percent, that could have been a dead fox. That certainly could have been a dead fox at 10 more percent. But at least Captain L is sending the message right now. Only 20 percent here between both of these two players, but the cat's starting to rack it up, bringing this thing back here. Slowly but surely, I was um, I was going to lose my mind. Had that setup killed, I was going to lose my mind. I truly saw the fate of Wakanda end right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Yeah, turning this thing from Nakanda forever to Nakanda sometimes, man. You know, Captain L just looking to hand the cat and L here. Oh, Waiting no. for the air dodge, getting the top hitbox from the Thunder, and Captain L is still in this with two stocks. The cat, though, recognizing that Captain L was going to recover from above, I and just, because of that, Rod 
getting hit by the up air. I just died on stream. I don't know if production <laughs> can see that. I certainly just passed out on stream. That was actually out of control. Both of these two players fighting with some sort of spirit here. I don't know what the heck it is, but both of them have an objective in at mind. But I'm, I'm really curious to see who's going to try to clutch this thing out here. Okay, there's the down throw. Gets the forward air. Of course, that changed right into the up air very quickly. Okay. Forward air up off the ledge. A little bit too preempted there with the dash attack that time. This is costing him a lot of percent. Got to get off of those platforms. Oh, it crosses him up. Ooh, really scary situation here for Captain L, especially on the top platform here of Dreamland. All right. Getting the up tilt into the up air, pressuring Captain L to recover and mix it up. Managing to find his way back towards the middle center of the stage, though. Okay. 107% here, using the Thunder Jolt. Oh, okay, I like that. Using the Thunder Jolt and then using those special to kind of fly right into Nikat. Just in case he drops shield from a Thunderbolt, he'd be able to fly into him that way. He wouldn't be able to hit him with like an up smash or something. I like that. Having all his bases covered. Oh, okay. The cat kind of showing him that uh, that top level experience. There's the back throw, though. The completely change of behavior coming from Nikat as a player right now has been insane. This is the final game amongst these two players. And this is loser's bracket, Rod. That is correct. And so one of these guys is going to have to go home here, unfortunately. Captain O is starting to turn it into something right now. Boom. Oh, the trade. Oh, but then the good DI there. Hanging on at 140%. Nakat looking for the ledge trump. But then the second back air, Nakat closing it out in a very, very clean fashion. I know he's definitely feeling himself right now. That such a turnaround in a set, Rod. Nikat applying the most pressure whenever Captain L found himself on top of one of the platforms of Dreamland. And because of that, Nikat was able to capitalize with a back air and finally taking the set over Captain L. Such a great set at that. I want to say it was probably the best set that we have seen so far in the opening of Get On My Level Top 24 Rod. And I really wish there was a